Hello, in this video we're going to add some simple collision detection to the particle system we created in the previous video. All the links to the previous videos about simulation nodes are in the video description down below. Now let's jump right into Blender. Okay, this is where we left off in the last tutorial. We have our particles, we give them some age, we kill them off when they're old. We have our gravity down here. Um, with terminal velocity and now what we need is uh, first of all some object that we can bounce our particles off of well that's easy enough let's just go in here and add a p -p -p diamond uh, by the way if you don't have these these are extra objects you can enable that it comes with blender just go to the add-ons and enable the extra objects and then there's extra curves I think too okay we have a diamond now, how about we rotate this guy just for some fun like this, maybe put them like that and put them right in the center here of our particle rain. Cool. Now let's go back to cube, which is actually our particles. Bring in the diamond. Now let's think about this. First of all, all of our particles have a velocity vector, which is just pointing downwards. So some are moving slow, which means they have a, a shorter vector. Maybe some are moving faster. They have a longer velocity vector. Now, how do we bounce off of an object? We need to sort of detect if the particle comes close to this object. And we can do that. Um, with the proximity node, okay, and then we need to calculate in the direction that the particle has to bounce off of, so the reflection vector. And we can do that using the vector math node. Okay, so let's do this. In order to calculate the reflection vector, we need the normal here. The normal vector of this face here would be this one. And then if this particle comes in and this is the normal vector, the reflection vector would be something like this, right? We switch this to relative because we're moving around our a diamond. Remember what we did with sticking the extrusions to the surface of Suzanne? Well, we have to do the same thing. We have to sample nearest sample index. The diamond is our geometry. This gives us the index. So we can sample a special value on this diamond object and the value we want is the normal. Okay, that gives us this vector here, the normal vector on the surface. Now we can calculate, oh, this doesn't give us a float by the way, it gives us a vector, of course. We have to connect this again. Okay, we can use a vector math node, plug in our normal vector we want to reflect some uh, vector, uh, actually the vector of our particle, the velocity vector. Um, we want to reflect using the normal vector. Okay, so what is the velocity vector? Well, it's a named attribute and it's a vector and it's called V. Okay, so we have V, we have the normal, and then this is the reflection vector bouncing this way. And instead of using V, we could actually plug in this thing right here, right? But now we're losing our gravity. Okay, we'll take care of that later, but this should be doing something. Let's delete uh, all of this. Let's go back to frame one, save, hit a spacebar. Yep, we lost our gravity. <laughs> Actually, we want this to go in here instead of this V. So we actually don't need this anymore. We use that in here and that gives us our gravity and then plug that in there. Okay, so this is a little bit backwards now, but we'll move that around later. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have something going on. Of course, our simulation now is calculating all of this all the time. So the particles aren't even close to our object yet and we're already doing this. So we need to figure out how, when are we gonna use our reflection vector? Well, we're gonna have to think of this a little more. We have a particle 
and it's moving this way with its v vector and we have several of those the vector is the speed that it's moving in and it as soon as the particle particle comes closer to this object we have to give it the reflection vector however we don't have any subframes calculated so we only calculate on each frame and that means we need to have some sort of like a, a force field shield around this object and when the particle is inside of this threshold here then we say okay we we call it a hit and uh, we make the particle bounce how do we do that well we here we have our geometry and we can use the proximity proximity uh, where shall i put that so take the diamond and we calculate the proximity of our particle to our diamond if that distance is less than a certain value that's our threshold i don't know point two then we want to use the reflection vector okay so actually we need a switch now and we can use that as our switch for a vector hold on switch for a vector if we're inside of this threshold we want to use the reflection vector and if we're not inside of this threshold we want to use our regular velocity vector cool now let's plug this in here and see if it works yeah something is happening something is happening but it doesn't look like it's bouncing off yet it actually looks like we're bouncing like we're bouncing off the bottom or we're bouncing off the wrong faces and we're not really bouncing either <laughs> okay so let's figure this out we have a velocity vector going down we have the normal we have the reflection vector calculated along or around this normal really all we need to calculate oh we need to figure out if the face is actually pointing towards the the particle right if the particle is going this way we don't want, need to calculate anything on these faces we can do that by comparing the direction of the vectors so this normal vector is pointing uh, towards the particle vector the velocity vector but this would be going the same direction that we're not interested in um okay we need to do a vector math dot product the dot product gives us a scalar value and that is between i think it's between negative something and positive something and it basically compares the direction of two vectors and if they're pointing in the same direction the dot product is uh, greater than zero and if they're pointing in opposite directions then the dot product is less than zero so if this is less than zero we know that our normal face normal is pointing towards the particle we need to plug in the normal of the face and we need to plug in the velocity but the dot product needs to have the input vectors to be of a scale one so we need another vector math and we need to normalize those vectors because they have uh, different lengths right there so we normalize this and plug it in there and that's our normal we normalize that plug that in here okay dot product if that is less than zero uh, we need a boolean math note boolean math if this is true and that is true then this is when we want to use our reflection note okay let's see go back save spacebar yep stuff is bouncing okay so those are bouncing that way but nothing is bouncing this way let's look at this from the top 
Oh, we are only bouncing in the positive directions. And I think I know why. <laughs> because we created our uh, terminal velocity over here, basically limiting all vectors to zero and greater than zero, right? <laughs> so what we need here is a negative huge value. And then this should work. Let's see. Are we bouncing in all directions now? Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Look at it from the front. Cool. Yeah, this is awesome. Now they're all bouncing with the same, they're not losing any energy, right? So they have the velocity vector going down and then the reflection vector is the same length as their incoming vector. We can fix that by plugging in a velocity, I mean a vector math node in here. And we could multiply or just scale it by like point, I don't know, how much energy should they lose? Half of their energy. So what does that look like? Oh, it looks pretty cool. Of course, this is not perfect because we have this threshold in here around our object and we count uh, anything that enters this area to be a, a hit. The optimum here would be if this was this threshold area would be as small as possible. Um, on the other hand, uh, it needs to be a certain size in order for the, a particle to even make it into this area, because if the particle is here and on the next frame, it's already down here, it uh, never entered this, this area. So it will just fall through our object and we don't detect the collision. So on the one hand, this threshold should be bigger. On the other hand, it should be as small as possible. And that really makes you appreciate the amount of work that real particle simulations and real physics simulations do for us. But this is not about creating a realistic, perfectly working physics simulation. This is about playing with simulation nodes in geometry nodes. So let's clean this up a little. Let's put all of this into a group and call that, uh, let's call it collision, collision. And this is down here. So we really don't need this anymore because we're using our V, our velocity vector. We do all this collision stuff in here and then we plug it into the gravity and then we plug it into our simulation. Now, what if you have more than one um, object that you want to collide with? This would be our diamond. Well, you would just co put in a collection info node, put the diamond and anything else that you want to uh, have collision with into that collection and then use that collection in here instead of just one object. Playing with simulation nodes is, as you can see, a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure that in the future we will see some prefabricated node groups uh, or maybe even built-in nodes for some of these physics simulations. Like we need an H, we need gravity, we need collision. And then of course there's all other physics simulations for like soft body or cloth. I'm curious to see where this is going. If you're following along and you messed something up and it's not working, you can always get the finished blend file of this tutorial with all the other blend files of all the other tutorials from my Patreon page. Again, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Thank you. Uh, write a comment down below. And if you don't know what to write, then just send an emoji. Thank you for watching. See you later.